Are you tired of killers like these? Ones that just get stuck in a wall? If I was a player, and this happened to me, I'd just laugh! <laughs> Are you tired of killers like these? Ones that just get stuck in the wall? Well, if I was a player, I'd just laugh. Well, not to worry. Name's Diodi, and I got your back. Today, we're gonna be learning about pathfinding. We're gonna get a little bit expert by playing with some script calls, but trust me, it's actually not that terrifying. There's only going to be two different types of script calls. And one will look complicated, but when we break it down, it's it's going to be like... Wow, that's easy. <laughs> so down in the descriptions of the video, you're going to see a link that will bring you here, which is a list of script calls for RPG Maker MV. And now that's already going to make you confused. MV? I thought this was for MZ. What you don't know, or maybe you do, is that MZ is actually a derivative of MV, so a lot of things that can be done in MZ is because it's just a child, quote unquote, of MV. So it has a lot of the core mechanics, and with that, a lot of the core script calls. And within one of those script calls is what's called pathfinding. And what this does is that it draws the shortest line between point A and point B, without colliding into any walls or objects that would stop it from moving. And this is exactly what will prevent a killer from, well, awkwardly <laughs> rubbing itself up against a wall. <laughs> so what we're going to do is within our set move route here in custom, we're going to enter some script. So this is exactly the script that we're going to use. The only thing is that we have to replace the X, the Y for the coordinates, and also car or char event and you'll just look above and see it what it is exactly that we're replacing it with game map period underscore events id so let's first by copying this line of code on over and this is what we're going to replace char event with instead this line of code here i so said we don't want those semicolons so control copy Bring it on over, find where it says the car event, and control paste. And we're also going to need the ID. So what you could do is just spot over here that it's ID 3. Or you could also write this dot underscore event ID. Now some of you may think that just inputting 3 is a lot easier than having to memorize this much amount. But trust me. In the case where you accidentally delete this event or maybe you need to make alterations to events, then you're going to see that entering this dot underscore event ID is very good practice. So this whole line of code is char event. So I'm going to control copy that and scan the rest of it until I see char event again. And if I do, well, I'll highlight it and control V to paste. So that settles that, right? No. We need to specify what X and Y is. From here, the rest of the process is actually very, very simple. Here's what you need to type. That's it. <laughs> so to show it all together again, this is all you need. This will return the X coordinate and this will return the Y coordinate. So when we test it, ta-da, it works. <coughs> but I want to show you something additional. Let's say instead you want this to be stored into variables for whatever reason. Maybe you have another property for gameplayer.x, gameplayer.y, and you need to use them as variables. Well, here's how you do it. Let me erase this and bring it back to Y and X just so we become familiar with what we're trying to look for. So what we can do is go into our database, into common events. And this is where the common events become very, very handy. We're going to switch the trigger to parallel and we're just going to create a switch. Track player and then we're going to use variables to constantly save the X and Y location of the player. But we do have to assign some new variables. So I'm gonna just choose these two down here, not too confused with stuff I made in the basic tutorials. Which, by the way, if you are interested, 
you can click on the little icon that will appear or in the descriptions down below to start that playlist. So I'm gonna call this player Y and the one above I'll just call player X. And we go into game data. We're gonna see that we can actually save the player's map X location. Now you're gonna open this up and see that there are also other things that you can save such as their direction and screen. Map is what you see down here which is the coordinate system that RPG uses for, well, tiling. Whereas screen is where the player is located on, well, the screen in pixels. So obviously we're gonna be using map X and also map Y. So I'm gonna copy, paste, and then just change the parameters. And just so RPG Maker can have a little bit of a break in between, I'm just gonna add a little wait command. I think 4 is pretty good. So now if we read this, if or when ever we turn on the switch, aka switch 20, then for every 4 frames we will update the players X and Y based on these variables. So by using script calls, we can actually call on to these variables. So I'm going to hit OK here and go back to my clown and go back into here. Hit space and go all the way towards the end where it says X. Well, if I type exactly this, this is gonna pull the value that's held in game variable number 19, which should be player X. And just to prove that, here it is, player X, and player Y is variable ID number 20. So let's go ahead and do that. Control copy, Highlight Y, Control Paste, and change 19 to 20. And also, I want to hit Skip if cannot move. So now the last thing we're going to do is actually turn on the switch. I actually made a copy of this main floor that I created using the basic tutorials. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and open up a new one. And I'm just going to call this Start. Change the trigger to Auto Run. And turn on the switch which is track player and I'm going to use a erase event so this will not constantly repeat and freeze us and now we can play it sorry I noticed I made an error and it was I was using brackets instead of parentheses so please be sure to use parentheses ta-da and now he's smarter he now knows not to walk into a wall awesome and that's it! Very, very simple stuff. Sorry for the little mistake I made there. Be sure to use parentheses and not brackets for game variable dot value. You will need the brackets for the event ID number, but parentheses for the game variable dot value. You can actually check out the descriptions for the full text that I used. I hope you found this video to be very, very helpful, and if you did, I'd appreciate a like button so very, very much. And feel free to comment down below on how exactly it helped you. Was your killer kind of like just awkwardly brushing up against a tree, <laughs> or maybe just bashing his head against a wall, or rubbing himself against a table? It, it's, it gets weirder the more and more I say it. <laughs> If you guys are interested, I am also making a game myself called Caster's Trap. You can actually check out the devlogs right there or in the descriptions, potentially the comments. And I also have an Instagram if you prefer just a much shorter format to you guys. The game is called Caster's Trap and it would mean the world to me if you guys took a little bit of interest in it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, let's